Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Anatomy with Alex. My name is Alexandra Ellis from aewellness.com, and Anatomy with Alex is my weekly show where I share anatomy and physiology in ways that are relevant and applicable to you and your life and your everyday. And today I'm talking about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that is cramps, spasms, charley horses. We're gonna get into the physiology of that, what it is, why it happens. We're gonna talk about what you should do to prevent them. Should you eat a banana in the middle of the night? Should you drink pickle juice? We'll get into it. As always, if you guys have any questions, be sure to drop them down into the comment box below. If you wanna watch past episodes of Anatomy with Alex, all you gotta do is click the hashtag in the title. Uh, And I also have a freebie for you up in the description as well where you can get my three best fixes for IT band tension. No foam roller required. So let's dive into it right now. Um, How many of you have had a Charlie horse in the middle of the night, right? How many of you? Me, all the time, it's the worst. So the, there's two types of cramps or spasms that you can um, think of them as. A cramp is an involuntary painful muscle contraction. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I know that. Um, there's multiple types. You can have a clonic one, C-L-O-N-I-C, which means it's alternating between contraction and relaxation. Uh, and you can also have a tonic one, which is a continued contraction over time, which is not fun at all. This may be brought on by a biochemical imbalance, which is sometimes associated with muscle fatigue, but that's not always the case. Now, a spasm is an involuntary contraction that's short duration, so just, right? It locks up and you're like, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, I know. And um, this too can be biochemically charged. Uh, It can also happen from a mechanical blow. So let's say, you know, you're running down the field, especially, you know, in athletics, and you get hit really hard, that can induce a spasm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those are the two types of uh, you know cramps or spasms that we're really going to be talking about today. And the reason why I chose this for a topic uh, was because after a class of a lot of uh, hamstring posterior chain activation, I woke up in the middle of the night with one of those cramps that makes you go, Ugh. and it's so awful. Um, It was awful, 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 awful. Uh, And so I was like, well, what causes this and what is going on? So now we have today and I'm talking about it. (laughs) So exercise associated cramps, this is like, you know, you're out there, you're doing work, it's really hot that day. Um, And this is a spasm caused by excessive water and electrolyte loss during and after intense exercise in the heat. So this is, you know, yes, it's super hot outside and I've been working out. And this actually usually happens with people um, who are in pretty good shape. So hydration for sure is an issue. Really, this is just fatigue. Um, Fatigue for sure can create this type of cramping. Uh, But for most of us, you know, I'm not outside um, doing crazy work all the time. I'm sitting in my bed sleeping at night and getting this awful cramp. So it's probably not a precursor to heat stroke, right? Uh, It's just, you know, those exercise induced ones are because you've overextended yourself. The solution for that is definitely stay hydrated, uh, but also be sure that your salt intake is uh, is present. And usually just, you know, whatever um, you have in your diet should be fine. Uh, we've talked on a previous episode about sweating and electrolyte imbalance and Gatorade and how that's a sham. Um, so again, you can click the hashtag anatomy with Alex to see Uh, that episode and I go into much further depth into why you don't need Gatorade. Um, But there's still no direct evidence that extra electrolytes will help you avoid muscle cramps because dehydration is still not the primary cause. Um, Because if it was, then all of the muscles in the body would cramp, not just a few. And what they have found and what I've experienced is that the muscles that normally cramp are the ones that cross multiple joints, right? So the calves or the hamstrings. And if you guys have had cramps, definitely give me a thumbs up. Um, <laughs> like thumbs up for the calf cramp, but it's really a thumbs down. Maybe give me a thumbs down for the calf cramp. So Pamela and Famita, thank you and welcome for tuning in today. So, um, 
Yeah, so because we cramp in only, you know, tend to be like the foot or the calf or the hamstring, it's not a global issue within the body. It's not dehydration. You're not dehydrated just in one spot um, because if you were dehydrated, then all of the muscles in the body would cramp, not just the few that normally do. So what about your stretching? and you get a cramp. This is likely due to a reflexive response um, to your body thinking that you're gonna overstretch. Um, I will be talking about proprioception in a couple of weeks and um, I'll talk about you know what's happening there, but know there's a whole process that goes on there of your body trying to protect you from overstretching. So that could be why you're cramping while you're stretching. Um, and it could also be you know the muscle reflex control being a little bit dysfunctional, again, due to fatigue. So uh, teachers, you might see this in your clients, you know, cramping because they're just tired um, and not used to the level of work that they're being asked to do. And hopefully as you continue to work together and they build up their strength and tolerance, that that cramping will happen less often. Um, and this idea, when I went to look for the research um, on cramping, and um, I'll share in the comments uh, two of the research studies that I looked at, they're, you know, they're not finding like, this is the exact cause of cramps. It's still kind of up in the air why it happens. It's not the same for every person. But as I said, it's common in muscles that cross over multiple joints, like your calf, which crosses over the gastroc, crosses over your ankle and your knee. Um, and hamstrings also cross over hip and knee. And the reason for that is because it's more likely that they've been doing a lot of work in the workout, right? In a workout, um, a muscle that only crosses one joint is not gonna be doing as much work as a muscle that's crossing multiple joints, especially if you're moving around. So another, um, you know, I was sharing about today's anatomy with Alex with a friend, and I mentioned that pickle juice is thought of as a solution to cramps. I know when I was in um, working as an athletic trainer at the UC Davis, that we would talk about that too, like to have pickle juice on the football field in case somebody cramped up and they could drink some pickle juice. But what the research has found is that people, they literally did research on pickle juice, which I just thought was so hilarious. <laughs> Um, so, you know, they would induce a cramp and then the person would drink the pickle juice and then the cramp would go away. But the cramp would go away faster than that pickle juice could ever be absorbed. It's the same idea of, um, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night with a cramp and I've had clients say like, oh, I just keep a banana by my bed and then I eat it and then I'm fine. Yeah, those, you know, the potassium and the electrolytes are not crossing into your body fast enough to resolve that cramp. That's probably just the cramp, you know, petering out. But with the pickle juice, this perception of saltiness, um, you know, changes your brain. And they still, they're like, well, we think it might be happening. Um, so even that, further studies are needed. But I just thought that was so funny that they studied, what does pickle juice do to cramps? So your brain is obviously totally involved because your brain is what's telling muscles to contract. And so if your brain is like, oh, electrolytes are coming, um, you know, maybe that's what's happening, but we're not totally sure. It's the salty flavor, which means you could have anything salty. Would a salted caramel work? Maybe. Would anchovies work? Maybe. I don't know. But I'm not about to eat anchovies in the middle of the night. Ugh. All right. Nocturnal leg cramps. And this is the one where I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And these are the worst. Have you guys ever had those night nocturnal leg cramps where you literally wake up in the middle of the night and you can't even scream because it's so painful? It's just like, Ugh. that's how mine always are. Here as well, the exact mechanism to what's happening is unknown, but it's probably associated again with muscle fatigue or maybe, you know, like a nerve misfiring, some nerve dysfunction versus electrolyte imbalance. And again, that's because if it were electrolyte imbalance, um, your whole body would be cramping, not just those, you know, common areas like calf cramps and, and hamstring cramps and things and foot cramps and things like that. Um, I will say in my own body, uh, fatigue definitely plays a role. Like I said, when I did that class where it was all posterior chain, a lot of glutes, hamstring, calf work that I did get a cramp in the middle of the night. Um, also, if uh, you, you know, maybe you've been traveling and you're a little bit dehydrated, you might find that you cramp a little bit more often. Um, there's also some suggestions that the way the sheets lay over your feet could induce a cramp. Um, 
this, I'm telling you, this last round of night cramps I got were so weird because I woke up right before it happened and then I went to move my leg and then it cramped up. So again, there's like some nerves misfiring. They're confused. There's all these receptors within the muscle itself that again, I'll talk about in a couple weeks when we talk about proprioception and body awareness. Um, so it's not as simple as just electrolytes. It's not as simple is eating a banana and drinking some pickle juice. Which again, I'm just like, ew, pickle juice? Ugh. So here's the big question. And I think people sit on either side of the fence. And so I'm curious, um, let me know in the comments. When you get a cramp in the middle of the night, do you stretch or leave it alone? Stretch or leave it alone? Just you know, type that in. I'm curious what you, what you guys do. I'm in the camp, um, and this is kind of based on you know what we talked about last week. We talked about how muscles work and muscle contraction. And in a cramp, those sarcomeres, the units of muscle that contract, they're totally overlapped, right? Because the muscle's like, and it's always in like one spot, right? It's not the whole muscle, it's just one spot, which to me is one motor unit is contracting. So if you go to stretch it, those sarcomeres are holding on for dear life and you're trying to pull it apart and pull it apart and pull it apart. Personally, I think that's just going to increase the potential risk of injury, right? Because you're super active and if you're trying to rip that apart, um, you might have some issues. And I have found in my own body, it might be different for you, that I'm more sore if I get a cramp and then I immediately try to stretch it. So what I have been doing lately is when I cramp, 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 is to bend and contract, try to get the whole muscle to contract so that it can help to, you know, reset and rewire the nervous impulse from the brain so that the whole muscle contracts and then hopefully it also relaxes, right? So if there's one part of the brain and the nerves that are telling that one little spot to contract, 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 when everybody around it starts contracting, it might be like, oh, okay, I don't need to. So what I do, let's say calf cramp, is I try to contract the calf, whether that's by bending my knee or trying to point my toes. Um, you know, just think of how can I contract the muscle that is currently cramping. And um, you know, once the silent screaming subsides, I usually find that I am able to do that. And then I'm less sore the next day. So curious, let me know in the comments below, are you a stretcher or are you a contractor when you get a cramp? Um, yeah. Curious to know what you guys think. I think you should contract with the cramp rather than trying to pry it apart, but that's just me. So what to do to avoid cramps? I would say stay hydrated, you know, drink water, um, salt your food so you have those electrolytes. If you're eating a lot of processed foods, stop. Um, you know, vegetables taste really good with just a little bit of salt and you, know, you don't have to minimize it. Um, you know, maybe this would be another good topic idea is about salt intake. Um, because there was a study done on Russian cosmonauts and the reason why they did the Russian cosmonauts was because they could control their food. They were doing a study about like, what would it be like to live? I think it was on Mars or something like that. And so the cosmonauts were living, you know, in one place where, you know, temperature controlled, their food intake was controlled, everything was controlled. And this is the hard thing about nutrition studies is, is you know, I'm out eating all these things. So it's harder to monitor, but not in this case. And so they changed the sodium input, right? Really high sodium. So super salty foods one day, slightly less salty, less salty, and then one day no salt at all. And then they were monitoring their urine output to see what the levels of salt were in the pee um, to see if salt ingestion was correlated to output and it wasn't. So if you're concerned that like, oh, if my food's too salty, I'll have high blood pressure. It's okay. Salt your bok choy. We'll be fine. Um, massage before bed could be, that's like a total tangent, I know. Uh, but massage before bed could also help relax your muscles um, in preparation for sleep. So if you get cramps a lot, try doing a little bit of massage or a little bit of stretching before you go to sleep. Um, you know, roll out those areas that commonly cramp for you, whether it's your calves or your hamstrings or your feet. Um, and that may help to relax the tone of the muscles involved so that you don't get that cramping in the middle of the night. Um, and you know, look at those pill bottles. What medications are you taking um, that maybe have muscle cramping as a side effect? So if all of a sudden you're getting a ton of muscle cramping and you just started a new medication, I know there are some out there uh, that can also induce cramping. So you know, maybe see if you can get an alternative or, you know, something like that if you are suffering from a lot of cramping. 
So that's all I have on cramps. May we all stretch and massage tonight so that we do not have calf cramps or hamstring cramps or foot cramps in the middle of the night. Um, if you guys have any questions, as always, you can drop them into the comment box below. And I will be posting the two research studies that I looked at for today's lecture um, in the comments as well. So you can check those out. Um, ooh, Pamela says, I focus on complete relaxation and the cramp dissipates. This is a major mental expertise, not physical. Yeah, that's really hard to do um, because usually when the cramp comes, I'm like, ah! So that, uh, but again, you know, global relaxation comes through that mental process of relaxation. So that's a totally, um, you know, meditation before bed and doing a meditation that's specific to body relaxation. So like a progressive body relaxation um, could be great for helping all of your tissues to relax. So that's a great suggestion. Thanks for sharing. Uh, next week, I'm talking about osteoarthritis, one of the most common forms of arthritis in uh, this country. And so if you are suffering from arthritis, osteoarthritis, if you have clients, um, if you have family members, if you're just curious what you can do to help keep osteoarthritis at bay, make sure you tune in next Wednesday at 3.15 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.